Hey everyone, this is Yannick from CodeSpecialist.com and in this video we are going to look into Cloud Foundry and its components. Hello and welcome to my talk on Cloud Foundry components. This talk is aimed at developers, so we assume you have a basic knowledge of Cloud Foundry and what the platform as a service is. We won't go too much into details. We just want to give a brief overview of the components of the Cloud Foundry platform and how they work. We have been following the official documentation, but during our research we found that some components that are still listed as active are actually merged into other components. To make this clear, we have marked the components with either an active or merged badge. We will now go from the top left to the bottom right of the components and I will describe them shortly. We start with the router. It has approximately the same task as its hardware relative. It knows all the devices in the network, in this case services, and can address them. The router receives this data from the BBS, a message component that will be explained later. The router is, so to speak, the door to the CF environment. There is no way around it. The router was originally written in Ruby, but was recently replaced by a more performant solution in Go. To avoid confusion, the router was also renamed Go Router in the course of this rewrite. The router is usually used with an upstream load balancer. The load balancer performs tasks such as DDoS defense, load distribution or failure protection. The load balancer is actually a hardware component, but it is often replaced by a software called HAProxy. HAProxy is an open source high availability load balancer written in the C language, but you can use whatever comforts you. If we consider the router as the door to the Cloud Foundry, then the authentication layer is the gatekeeper. This is taken care of by the so-called UAA, which is short for User Account and Authentication. The service is based on the OAuth 2 protocol and enables token-based authentication. It also takes care of authorization, both for users and services. Authorization, in turn, is met by a role-based concept in the CCDB, also known as the Cloud Controller Database. Like any OAuth 2 based service, it offers a token and an authorized endpoint with which the authentication of third-party clients on behalf of the Cloud Foundry user is also possible. Besides the UAA, there was also the login server, which took care of user password-based authentication. In the GitHub repository of the login server, however, it is marked as deprecated and merged into the UAA. We now come to the app lifecycle layer the layer that takes care of everything within the lifecycle of apps. First, there's the Cloud Controller. The Cloud Controller is responsible for the process control of app deployments. For this purpose, it communicates with the Diego component via the so-called CC bridge. In addition, the Cloud Controller is responsible for coordinating the processes between the various lifecycle components such as the vertical or horizontal scaling of applications. It is also responsible for updating the authorization entries already mentioned. Next, we have the Ansync component. This has nothing to do with the band of the same name from the 90s. At least I haven't found anything like that. It probably stands for number synchronization or end synchronization. The component writes the so-called desired LRP and the BBS component, where LRP is short for long running processes or simply the number of running instances of an application. If the cloud controller is instructed to scale an application horizontally, the Ansync component is informed of this change and writes the new desired LRP into the BBS. Ansync, however, is no longer an independent component. It is included in the cloud controller. We now reach the Diego brain. The Diego brain is a part of the Diego architecture and it is responsible for staging and deploying Diego cells. It is also responsible for compensating for discrepancies between the desired LRP and the actual LRP values by starting or stopping cells. Now we get to the cell wraps. 
The actual LRP value in turn comes from the cell reps component. Each cell receives a cell reps instance that monitors it and, among other things, delivers the actual LRP value for a BBS component. However, these cells and their associated data must also be stored somewhere, and this is done in the next level, the app storage and execution. First, we got the blob store. The blob store forms the basis of the data storage. Blob stands for binary large object. The data can be stored in an internal or external database. The database stores pointers that point to the sectors in the file system in which the binary data is stored. The file system is a simple storage service instance, or another instance with S3 compatible endpoints. Applications are stored in pure form and are so-called droplets as compiled binary data. This speeds up horizontal scaling considerably, as the data does not have to be prepared in a time-consuming process, but can be deployed directly. In addition, all the files stored are identified by the hash. To avoid the same files are uploaded multiple times. Then we come to one of the core pieces of Cloud Foundry, the app execution or the Diego cells. Diego cells are virtual machines that virtualize the runtime environment for garden containers. This is where applications and tasks run. Additionally, the Diego cells report their current status to the BBS component and their logs and metrics to the log aggregator or the metrics collector. The virtualization solution used is the garden technology. Garden is also based on the so-called open container initiative and thereby supports the same low-level API as Docker or Kubernetes. According to my research, it now also supports the execution of Docker images. This brings us right to the service level. Since we are in the cloud-native area in the domain of microservices, the service is so to speak everything with which applications can communicate in some way. In the case of Cloud Foundry, services can be any application that implements the Service Broker API. For example, databases or any third-party SaaS solution. Services are bound to the application and then entered into the CCDB, so the Gowrouter can forward the requests. In order to relieve developers of even more work, Cloud Foundry has a so-called marketplace, where these services are offered. We are now already in one of the most important levels of any service-oriented architecture, the messaging level. One of these services, which has already been mentioned several times, is the BBS. BBS is short for Bulletin Board System. The component's function is similar to its antiquated predecessor. Services can store data here that is read or written by other services, like in a board system. The BBS communicates via HTTP or HTTPS protocol. Another service on this level is Console. Console has various tasks, such as storing application statuses and log management of resources. But its primary task is to act as a DNS-based service discovery service. Services can be registered with this component by other components and thus be found by other services. Another messaging technology that is used is NUTS. NUTS is based on the so-called publisher-subscriber principle. Services can register as subscribers for certain messages, which are published by other services and thus become readable. NUTS is used alongside many other integrated solutions in Cloud Foundry, as it has a particularly high performance. In contrast to other published subscribe solutions, such as RabbitMQ or Redis. This brings us to the lowest and last level of the Cloud Foundry components, the metrics and logs. First, we have the metrics. The metrics collector collects metrics and statistics from other components. It is not used for monitoring applications, but monitoring the Cloud Foundry deployment. Last but not least, we have the log aggregator. The log aggregator enables developers in particular to stream the status or logs of the instances 
and thereby enables to monitor applications. If you like this video, please subscribe and make sure to activate notifications so you get notified when we publish new videos.